I will speak about the vision. So let me first state what I mean, what I understand under a vision. I differentiate between cohesion and adhesion. For me, cohesion are strong intermolecular bindings of chemical nature, like code bonds. And adhesion are relatively weak interactions of non-chemical nature. This Weak interactions do play a very important role in our life. All we and you are unities and maintain our <laughs> integrity due to adhesive forces. If we could switch off the adhesion forces between cells of our body, we would look like this puppet. The adhesive forces are also known as Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals introduced them in 1873. In the year 1873, the existence of atoms was not accepted. Only few scientists <laughs> thought that the molecules of atoms do exist. The existence of atoms came later and they proved in the 20th century. <laughs> so he, it was a hypothesis that the bodies do exist of atoms, of neutral atoms, and then they, they interfere. But there was is known by his theory of real gases. And he, uh, he developed theory of condensation of gases, and later in 1910 or 11, he got Nobel Prize. For this, for this theory. And of course, it was just assumption that the neutral bodies, neutral molecules uh, do attract each other. And the complete theory was made much later, in 1956, by Lifshitz. And five years later, in 1961. <laughs> Lifshitz, together with Jeloshinsky and Pitaevsky, published a very comprehensive theory of Van der Waals. And this theory is valid till now. This is the theory of Van der Waals. And if I would, um, would try to formulate the main result in only one equation, this would be the following. If there are two bodies, the body one and the body two, in the distance L between them, and the gap is filled by the medium three. Then the interaction, the attractive force per unit area, that means the attractive stress, is given by the equation by this equation from this paper of Richards, Lashinsky, and Vitaevsky. And one can see that the interaction forces are inversely proportional to the third power of distance. They are weaker in larger distances as the third power of distance. And one can see that these interactive forces are quantum mechanical effects because in the equation, you see the H, that is the Max Planck constant. And in the classical mechanics, Max Planck constant is zero. <laughs> there were no interactions. Of course, at the moment when Van der Waals introduced his forces, there was no quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics appeared in 1927. <laughs> so, uh, and Max Planck constant and so on. So, um, so uh, of course, he could not he could not give the theory of his forces, but he just assumed and later it was comprehensive theory. And what is very important is that there is a, this combination of epsilons. Epsilon is the electric permittivity of a medium, or it is known as the electric constant of a medium. 
relative dielectric permittivity. Vacuum has the electric permittivity one, and all other dielectrics have the electric permittivity larger one. If if the medium, the third medium, is vacuum, then the dielectric permittivity of the third body with epsilon three is one, and then this product is positive, and this means the attractive force is positive. That means that the, the body is really attractive. In vacuum, two neutral electric and neutral bodies attract each other. But if the dielectric constant of the medium lies in between, between is larger than the first one and smaller than the second one, then these have different sizes and the <coughs> attractive force is negative. <laughs> the attractive negative force between the, the bodies repel each other. So we just have to uh, bear in mind that the device forces, the attractive forces, the adhesive forces can be positive and negative. The bodies can attract or repel each other. Both is possible. Normally we think about these forces as attractive forces, but they can also be repelling forces. One can let the bodies attract each other also by other means. For example, if there are two conducting bodies, so this conductive layer and the finger is also conducting body. And in between is the electric piece of this. Yeah. <coughs> then and one applies voltage. Then one of the bodies is charged positively, the other is negatively, and so that they attract each other. And it is interesting that the distance dependence of, a, of this electrode, one tells it electrode is this very important topic in haptics, in how, how one feels uh, yeah, yeah, different uh, objects. <coughs> and the distance dependence of this electrode is absolutely the same as when there are forces. So one cannot distinguish if there are true Van der Waals forces or electrodes, they are just phenomenologically similar. The only difference is that in electrodes we can control the strengths of adhesive forces by applying different forces. Now, <laughs> what are the topics of my? I, I thought it was five times adhesion. There are, of course, di five different aspects of adhesion. Adhesion and friction. This one can one could tell this is the main topic. Adhesion is something which which holds the bodies together. It can also be repelling. Um, and the friction is something which tangent with, with, which is connected with tangential force and also with energy dissipation. So Adhesion, energy dissipation, influence of adhesion and of, on friction, or influence on friction of adhesion. This, these are the topics. <laughs> and uh, in particular, adhesive dissipation in uh, energy dissipation, adhesive contact, energy con adhesive contribution to friction, influence on friction of adhesion, negative adhesion, repelling adhesion, <laughs> and super uh, lubricity, and finally also. Wear, because if we have friction, we almost in all cases have also wear, and there in relation with adhesion is also five different topics all around adhesion. I start with the one of the first, one of the most known theories of adhesive contacts. This is so the so-called GKR theory from Jens Johnson, Kendall, and Roberts. It is Kenneth Johnson is one of the most known contact mechanics. So this world is contact mechanics is the most cited book on contact mechanics in all, all times. <laughs> and here is, it, here is Berlin at my institute in 2004, making, <laughs> giving a seminar about adhesion. <laughs> So in 1971, they 
uh, have written a paper, surface energy and contact of elastic solids, and this is the most cited paper in contact mechanics. It's very, 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 very famous, and maybe you do not know this uh, theory, but but all contact mechanicists, or everybody who has to do with adhesion, they know the theory, the classical theory, but only, not, not everybody who knows the theory knows or remembers that this is the theory of, of the so-called frictionless contact. It means that the bodies, uh, here is a photo of adhesive contact. Uh, what, what is here, um, the lower part, is a jelly bought in a supermarket. A, a good jelly, and there, there is a other cylinder put on the jelly, and so there is a such, such neck of uh, adhesive neck. And if you, if you apply the force, vertical force, you need to apply the force to, to separate the bodies, and then at some, at some critical force they are separated. This is an adhesive contact, and yeah. The GKR made it on the assumption that there is no friction in the contact. So it means that if we apply tangential force, it will slide without friction. It, of course, contradicts all experimental evidence. All adhesive contacts are with friction, but the theory is of contacts without friction. And the the theory of GKR is an energetically based theory. They consider energetic balance. And so it is clearly that if the contact is moved in horizontal direction, then the energy does not change. And if the energy does not change, there is no friction, no, no force, and, and no friction. That is a good theoretical assumption which contradicts experimental <coughs> the normal adhesion, it does not. It is not so important if there is friction on it. However, so in uh, no friction, but but in the normal direction, if we make the complete cycle of adhesive contacts, which is shown here, the, the, the body is brought into the contact, then it is moving back, and this is a force on the separation on the right is shown in the complete cycle. There is this energy dissipation. Let us look on the stages. First, there is no contact, and the normal force is zero. Then, in the first moment of contact, there is a jump in the force, a negative force. So if you move, then, then it is, and, and we, we should have, we should apply negative force, no, not the, the force in the direction of the, of the indentation, so to, to, help, to help it in equilibrium, we should apply negative force. It is jump like change, and further, if we indent further, there is some change of the force, and if we move back, forth and back, the, 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 the configuration will move along the same line. It is completely reversible process and up to the point of the instability, of the final instability when the contact is lost suddenly. It is two jumps. Jump into contact and jump off of contact. And in this cycle, energy is dissipated. Because energy is uh, this area under the under the force displacement curve forth and back. The energy the, the area enclosed is the energy which is dissipated. Which <laughs> and and you see that if we move here forth and back, then the energy enclosed is zero. So this is a completely reversible non dissipated process. And only between jumps there is an energy dissipation. And one can show, and of course, if we move here, it is also a non dissipated And if we move here, it is non dissipated Or every movement of this contact is reversible, with exception of jumps. And one can show that all this energy which is dissipated in the sun, enclosed by this area, 
This is dissipated only by this one and this one jumps, only during jumps. Energy dissipation is always due to jumps. Now, I come to the jumps. I would like to dis discuss jumps and then come back to the dizzy context. The role of jumps in energy dissipation and in friction was analyzed first uh, by Ludwig Prandtl in 1928. Ludwig Prandtl is known most by his hydrodynamic works and aerodynamic works. He made very much for air by dynamics. Uh, but, but he also had written this paper where he considered a body which is moving in a periodic potential with, and it is moved with a spring. The spring, this is a spring constant k, it moved with the velocity v, this small velocity v, slowly it moved, and then one looks how this body is moving. This model, frontal model, later become the basis model for analyzing the experiments with atomic force microscope. Atomic force microscope, schematically, schematically shown here, this atom, atomic surface and uh, the cantilever and this, this tip of the, uh, of the atomic force microscope and what, how, the, how this tip moves is described by the Franklin moment. There are two possibilities. Either the contact stiffness is very high, and then the, this body follows these coordinates periodically but without jumps, continuously. It is dragged with a very strong spring. And then one can show there is no jumps, and one can show theoretically, by integration, that the average force, average tangential force, which, is, which we have here, is exactly zero. So we have microscopically seen zero friction. We have potential, but it is potential. There is no energy dissipation. But if this spring is soft enough, there is some critical source, then the Moving is in with jumps. It is moving con continuously and then jumps. This is the coordinate of this right side and, and x is coordinate of the body itself. So it moves con continuously, then makes jump again, continuously again jumps. And due to this jump, yeah, one, one can see and hear these jumps if you have something which is uh, soft enough. These are jumps. You, you can hear this jump because every this uh, jump you, you, you can hear. If it, if it would be strong enough, then there is no, no some jumps and no energy dissipation. Here you would have energy dissipation. This is under critical. <laughs> so then here you have jumps and final. And uh, if, you, if you see the force, then there is. Jumping force, but there is average. <laughs> average. If you make average, it is uh, this is the average is the microscopic friction force. These are experimental data with atomic force microscope. One has a tip on the atomic on the atomic plate, and the force um, is this periodic with jumps periodic, and and if you move back, then you have this another. <coughs> there is a, some area enclosed by the by the curves by moving force and back, and this enclosed area is dissipated energy. But if the uh, the stiffness or the potential gets smaller, weaker, then you have under critical situation where the moving force and back are are completely the same. You move just in the same curve, and so there is no area enclosed and no friction. You can you can have atomically force microscope 
and you can either have friction or no friction, just depending on the softness of the cantilever. So the friction is not some intrinsic property, but, but the property of instability of the system. This was understanding of nanotribology of the 1990s, 2003 year, uh, years. This, uh, this time span, it was understood. The most important understanding was if there are no instabilities, there is no friction. Friction is only energy dissipation, it's only connected with instability. So now <clears throat> I coming back to addition. There is very well known scientist Faber, David Faber, and Fuller or Fuller was his doctorand, I think, collaborator, and. and Taber was collaborator of Bowden, and Bowden was director of Cavendish Laboratory. Cavendish Laboratory at Cambridge University is one of the most known laboratories in the world. The director of this Cavendish Laboratory was, for example, James Clare Maxwell, and Rutherford, and Lowell. And all people who are very well known on Nobel Prize. Uh, uh, so, and Bowden was also director of this laboratory, and with Pegasus stay, but they made friction. Theory of friction is very well known book about friction. And they suggested adhesive theory of friction. And this adhesive theory of friction uh, looks like this. If we take two metallic bodies, for example, and press each other, then they are contacting in some micro context. And in this micro context, they are plastically deformed, and build adhesive junctions. So they weld, so to say, in small points. And if we apply now tangential force, they, these junctions should be shared, and this is what we feel is friction. This is adhesive theory of friction by Taylor and Bowman. And they were criticized for this theory. Because um, if there are welding and junctions, this means that there should be adhesion. But we have friction also in the systems where we do not see adhesion. For example, I, I do not <laughs> need to apply any force. To, to, so there is no adhesion between them, but, but there is friction. <laughs> and, and this is what uh, the theory. And this paper was an answer on this criticism. They an answer that um, showed how it is possible that we do not see adhesion but we still have adhesive friction. Adhesive. So, and I explain it on the model which they use. A very simple model for adhesion. They, um, it is basically the model of, of a rough body in, with a contact with a smooth body. They modeled uh, the summits of roughness just with, with springs. The separate spring, uh, this one spring, second spring, with some distribution of height. And I assume distribution, they assume the Gauss distribution, I assume exponential distribution. There is no much difference between what distribution one has. This distribution is characterized by the parameter L, and L can be called, it is the characteristic spreading of highs, this is which we call roughness of the model. And the adhesion is characterized if we have some, some contact, and we have uh, adhesive contact, then adhesive adhesion can be characterized by the distance to which we can move up to the instability, up to the loss of the contact. This is characteristic elongation up to the critical elongation up to the breaking the contact. So there are two legs here, the roughness and the critical elongation, which is characterizing condition. And Phil uh, Bowden analyzed this movie and has shown that if the critical adhesive length to the breaking is smaller than the roughness, so the ratio is smaller one, then this system has no adhesion. So we, we put 
of course, there is some adhesive contacts, but if we take the, the force away, then the, some, some springs which are stressed, they will break other springs. And so finally there is one last spring, if we will, of course, one microcontact will be, but, but normally we have no macroscopic adhesion. But if the characteristic um, length of adhesion is larger than, or much larger than L, then, then we have adhesion. If it is much larger, then it is just as smooth. If, if, the, if we need very large uh, distance to break the contact, then the small roughness does not play any role, of course. Yeah. And, um, and if they are approximately the same, it's larger one, but not, not much larger, then the adhesive force is proportional to the normal force. That is given by this adhesive coefficient. So we, we should press to get large adhesion. We press and then put, we have some adhesive force. If we press stronger, then we have stronger adhesion. It is adhesive sensitive, uh, pressure sensitive uh, adhesives, and uh, most of practically used adhesives, for example, this uh, tape for uh, scotch, uh, adhesive tape, is sensitive. Yeah, if you have, if you would like to, to have a strong contact with scotch, yeah, you should <laughs> press it very high, then, then it is strong contact. <clears throat> now, this means, this means that there is a situation when you, they, you have no microscopic adhesion. But during the process, there is still some of the contacts are in adhesive, in adhesive, adhesive contacts. And if we would press and then move tangentially, then these adhesive contacts will break. But if we then put the normal force away, we have no adhesion. So we have adhesion and we have no adhesion. We have no microscopic adhesion. But we have microscopic adhesion during the whole process. And it leads to, to some... Uh, to some friction. But first of all, it leads also to dissipation. Here is for Taylor and Fuller uh, model the dependence of the force, of the force, normal force, on the indentation depth D. So we, we press and look how the force depends. And then we move back and the force can be, can be negative and then <coughs> We will move force and back and look how the, the force is changing. And if the delta H by N, so if the characteristic adhesive length is much smaller than the stiffness, that's zero. Then you just move force and back on the same line. This is non-adhesive contact. There is no dissipation between force and back in the same line. But if you have some adhesion, this is the line two, then you have you no know, the, the line and the and the and the pressing you have always the line one but by the stitching you have the line two and there are between them there is some closed area and this is some energy dissipation <coughs> if you are in the critical state delta h by l is one then you have zero adhesion and if you have larger than one then you have positive adhesion so you can have the, these are real like adhesive adhesive tape. Yeah, you you have you apply force and then you have to apply negative force to, to detach. This is a negative force. This is if you press more than you have even large negative force. But if you press not too large, then you 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 have no you do not have to apply any force. It's zero force. You just you just take away the force and and, and there is yeah it depends it detached. <laughs> but between force and back there is a close uh, and there is damping contact. <laughs> there is some some damping and if we move the measure then there will be three. We have not necessarily necessarily have such uh, separate contacts as we considered here. If here is, for example, simulation of rough surface and the complete contact. As some, some 
very soft adhesive in contact with rough surface will have such form. Well, every, everywhere in contact, maybe with some <laughs> small points, but the boundary will be not smooth, but rough, because of roughness of the surface. If it would be just a, just a smooth uh, parabolic body, then the contact area is a circle. But if it is roughness, then, then you have a rough circle. And if we, if we put it and attach it to this, then you can see how the contact area is changing. And contact area is changing not continuous. It is sticking at some point and then jumping at <coughs> different points. And so there is spinning and jumping, spinning and jumping. And this means that in this case will be energy dissipation because with any jumps is connected energy dissipation. It is how it looks in experiment. <laughs> this rough surface is so elastomer in contact, and maybe you can see that that this uh, we should see now here by the back that, that the movement is not continuous. That, that it is. <laughs> jumping at some points, and <coughs> the whole jump is connected friction and uh, end of energy dissipation. And this leads to the effect which we already have seen in the paper and, and follow model, and we can see this just the same that if we put uh, turbulence into contact, there will be a jump, and then we have, according to the Jekyll theory, we have moved both forth and back on the same curve, but we are not moving on the same curve, because it is moving not continuously, and that is why it is not, not uh, reversible, and that is why it, even here, by moving forth and back, we will have some, some dissipation. Oh. And so here, here again, the same, before it was numerical experiment made by Fitchian, and and this is how it looks in experiment. And you also see that here is the, here is a contact where, as a matter of fact, you should move both forth and back according to the theory on the same curve, but you are not moving on the same curve because there is energy dissipation yeah. during some process. For example, during uh, due to jump. Now it is easily to understand. I go so in some sense to the uh, now to friction, to other topic, to friction, uh, adhesion and friction. And the main idea why why I have told that I will speak about adhesion, 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 and adhesion, that it is not important how this is adhesive contract to two bodies which are moving not in this direction, but in this direction. Jika air contact with no friction in the contact, but with adhesion. And you can see, this is building the contact, the adhesive contact, then it's moving on the other side, and then it will be broken. But the adhesive contact is asymmetric by coming and and breaking, and so this curve will be asymmetric, and there will be some average force for the whole process in this direction, and there is energy dissipation. Here we have the complete cycle of adhesion, adhesion, and so we will have energy dissipation. Basically, if we have such a system and we move in this direction, we call this adhesive dissipation or adhesion. If you have the same process, absolutely the same, nothing changing, but in this direction, we call it friction. We call it friction, but it is the same. <laughs> it is the same phenomenon, and, uh, and so we, I, I call it now, so to say, for the time being, the adhesive contribution to friction, meaning that there can be also other contributions to friction, but I'm afraid there is only one. <laughs> Contribution. Now let us consider not not two asperities, two summits moving against each other, but just just the contact on the rough surface which is moving on the only one direction. 
tangential moving of a convex is basically bringing into contact on one side and detaching on the other side. There is jumps on this side, just just in, is, <laughs> just is in moving only in this direction, and by moving in this direction it is, so this is just, it, at the same time this and this process. On one side it is this process, on the other side it is this process. It is indenting on one side and detaching on the other side. And, and both are going into with jumps, because it is an absurd. And uh, if it is uh, a jump, there is energy dissipation. If you are moving and there is energy dissipation, that means that you have friction. <laughs> this is a simple idea. One can also calculate how the how large is the friction if you have some adhesive property, properties and some roughness. This is how it looks in experiment. It's also, this tangential movement is not complete, not smooth moving of, of the contact, but it is, it is something like this. And with all these jumps, is uh, connected to the energy dissipation. So now a little bit to theoretical concept: how one can use it. What I have said with the jumps to macroscopic description of context, of context, adhesive context, and of uh, friction. And here you experiment. Uh, ex you see experiment. Yeah, we do look at the next cycle. So it is detaching. Now it is detaching again. It is moving up to see. And then at this point we detach. But the line does not move. And that is why there is linear dependency of the force <coughs> and the indentation depth. In all cases, you have under reversing. This is reversing. Point, and then you have a linear dependency, and during this linear dependency, the boundary does not move. Because we have seen, due to roughness, the boundary has friction. But friction, the friction depends on the, on the direction. If you move in this direction, and the friction is, is, is you know, acting in this direction, if you move in this direction, it, moves, it acts in the other direction. If you have some friction, then you have to achieve again, to, to overcome the friction in the other direction, to let this, this bone be moved. And this needs some time, and then let us view have forward this uh, linear part. And this can be characterized by the friction of the boundary line. Just, just as every object which is dissipative, moving dissipative, it has friction, and it can be characterized by friction of the boundary line. There is boundary of the adhesive contact, and when it is moving, it has friction. Now, this now how I try to use this concept of boundary friction. I come back to the theory of Johnson Kendall Mitchell. <coughs> it is a very interesting, funny theory from the historical point of view, because I I tell it in this way. Uh, Jig Herr did nothing. They just understood that the boundary, this opening of the adhesive boundary, is the, uh, the crack, the Griffiths crack. Griffiths formulated 1921 is Griffiths' theory of cracks. It is the basis of fracture mechanics. He made it on the, on the basis of the principle of energy balance. He, he, he says that the crack is an equilibrium. If the energy release, elastic energy release by small movement of this crack, is equal to the work of adhesion, to the work which is needed to, to produce uh, to, to do when, when detaching to services from each other. This was 1922, Griffiths. And these guys, they understood that the adhesive contact is, is Griffiths crack. It is a, a Griffiths crack. They write it, it is as Griffiths crack. They 
and do not cite the, the work of Greece, but they write in the paper and this Greece right? And so they apply the same energy balance method to the and, and get the, the solution for the adhesive content. And that is one approach is really consider this adhesive, the boundary, as a crack. And if we consider crack, we can consider its equilibrium by considering the forces which act on this boundary. And there are two forces. One is coming from elastic fields around, and it is given by the theory of elasticity and contact mechanics. In this case of two parabolic bodies, it is given by uh, this equation. And in the other direction is, is uh, acting the force of adhesion, which is just equal to the work of adhesion. It is from the fra fra fracture theory. Can, one can. <laughs> there are there many adhesive theory which, theories which consider this side on the, on the process. So the equilibrium is just equal elastic forces equal to the adhesive forces. But if you have the boundary friction, before, before I told that there is a, also a boundary friction, then depending on the direction of movement, you just have to add, this is an equilibrium of forces, but if you have friction, you have to add the friction force, or to, you do the, the subtract, because depending on the direction of the, of the movement. So in one direction, the equilibrium condition is this one, and the other direction is this one, and this means that the appearance of friction force, boundary friction force, is equivalent to changing the effective work of adhesion. The work of adhesion is denoted here with gamma, that is the energy which is needed to, to separate two bodies, the unit value of two bodies. And for, for closing the crack, you have smaller, uh, smaller work of adhesion, and for opening the crack, you have larger. It is well known, it's used in and fraction mechanics very often, but let them very often make sense of it, it, the, the boundary has friction with it. It is described very, very detailed, all these things in this paper and friction. Yeah, uh, and one of the others, of oh, oh, is me, um, Chen Li, <laughs> is, is him, and there are two other colleagues. From the Lin, Lejanka, Jakob, Lejanka, and Roman, Roman made together with me this boundary element method, which was used in Jakob, Lejanka, made this thing. This is um, a page from, from this paper, and this is a simulation. What, what you have seen here. Is a simulation of indentation of a parabolic body which has periodic roughness. So, rough parabolic body. And the gray, gray line is the force indentation dependence without roughness. It is smooth body. This is a GKR theory. This GKR theory is here. So normally, according to GKR theory, this is the first contact, it should be jump here, and then moving along this here, along this curve up to this point. But in reality, for rough surface, it is jumping not so far, and then there is, by inverting, there is a linear dependence, and then it goes up to this point. But you can, you can, and it is the same for the, for the uh, normal force as a function of the contact rate. But it is interesting that the numerical curves can be um, approximated with GKR theory. This is the GKR theory, this is the GKR theory, and this is the GKR theory. This is the GKR theory with a true uh, surface energy of work of adhesion. This is a GKR theory with a smaller surface energy, and this is a GKR theory with a larger surface energy. So the GKR theory is not any, not very anymore, but it is very with a smaller uh, adhesive work uh, when, when indenting, and larger adhesive work when 
polígono. Não, não é nada, é um pouco mais de nada. Eu tenho dito que é um pouco mais sensitivo a visita. Basicamente, todos os visitas são muito sensitivos. Taping, tape to visit tight and so on. That one, one should apply force. And this means when when something is when the adhesive is pressure sensitive, this means that there is no complete contact. You make more contact by pressing. If if you have a, if you just put and have complete contact, then there is no dependence on pressure. You have only pressure sensitivity if it is not complete contact. Then you can make it more complete by pressing. Then there is press. So practically you always have not complete contact. But what is not complete contact? You have you have some some area of contact and there are some somewhere contact and somewhere no contact. So there are some some mixture of contact and non-contact. But if you have but if you have some so there are inside the contact there are many micro contacts which if you move tangentially move against each other and, and giving rise to the to the frictional force to the frictional force just just according to the mechanism which I, which I explained and and of course such such summit and such points where there is tangential movement and energy separation is of course proportional to the area and so we will have some contribution that proportion to the end. We have we have spoken about the friction according to the boundary, but there is also some friction according to the area, because inside the area there are many microscopic contacts which are moving against each other, and the number of such contacts is proportional to the area. And there exist in experiments we can uh, really show that there exists yeah. Depend, independently of what happens, how how we, we do it, there is some the tangential forces uh, contribution proportion to the to the, to the area and is characterized by some characteristic uh, tangential stress. Yeah, for experiments which we did, did know did made it was approximately 40 kilopascal soft soft. <coughs> So let me summarize what I have told about. There are two contributions of friction in the, in the contact, in the contrast and boundary contribution and the area contribution. And this contribution is due to addition, and this contribution is due to addition. <laughs> so, so if it is, um, basically, if one thinks philosophically, of course, for 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 creating tangential force, the, the molecule should be connected and then should be separated and jumps and there is there are no, <coughs> no miracles in this world, so it should be adhesion. The, the molecules should interact. And and uh, what I only tell is the, a little bit microscopic view on this fundamental philosophical mm -hmm. Now I uh, come to the uh, three further points. The first is adhesion and superlubricity. I started with a statement or with explanation that the adhesive forces can be attractive and can be repellent. If you have, if you need strong large strength or large friction, you need positive adhesion. If you need slow, small friction, you need negative adhesion. And if you, if you have some intermediate medium producing negative adhesion, then the bodies are just levitating on some distance from each other. And um, in a very simple model uh, that is very often is used in adhesive theory, very simple model of adhesive forces, when there is 
up to some distance, but of course the, the repelling forces are strong in the vicinity, in the, in the context, and then they are decreasing when the distance is increased. But very simple mode is that they are constant and then disappearing after some distance. But if you have this theory, then, then uh, the, the, the picture is the following. We take two parabolic bodies, press them, then we have the stress distribution according to parabolic pair solution. It is classical quantum mechanical solution. This is dependence of the normal pressure as a function of relative radius. Radius is divided by the complex coordinate divided by the complex And everywhere where the repelling force is larger than this pressure, they will be in contact. And then, then they, they will here, here the the pressure is smaller than the repelling force. They will be levitating, and where it is larger, then they will be in direct atomic force, in atomic contact. So there, are, there will be regions of strong interaction and region of weak interaction. And if this repelling, repelling adhesive stress is larger than the largest contact stress, then they are levitating in all the contacts, and the question is, can one realize it? Yes, one can realize it. This is very well known. Fluid superlubricity. Superlubricity was um, developed, yeah, it was found first and then developed <coughs> by the, in the state Kilgore Tribology in Tico and Vesky, but Professor Ru and his group, Jeremy, and yeah. For, for making small friction, you need to separate the surfaces, not to let them con come into direct atomic contact. And you can make it either by uh, equal planning for this lubrication or by negative position. Now, another one. Yeah, I saw the whole contribution of addition to friction. Now, what is the action, what is the influence of the tangential force on the normal adhesion of the strength, adhesive strength? Basically, if you have two, two summits and you, you have it in contact, you have to apply some normative, this is a normal, normal adhesive force. You, the force you have to apply and to separate. But if you move it tangentially up to the critical state, then they almost separate. You need only apply a very small force. And then they are also already separate. So tangential force makes the normal force, the tangential force smaller. This is, these are two scotch tapes here. And I will the page one in normal direction and the other one in tangential direction, and you can see it. It's very well known how this happens. And now we pull it just strongly in the horizontal horizontal direction. And it separates without applying normal force. It is why? Because it is the same. The friction and the radiation are the same for different for normal and tangential forces. Uh, now, the final topic, because it is already much. If you have friction, normally you have also wear. Not only not only energy dissipation, but also. Um, Material dissipation, and um, yeah, this is again what you have seen many times. And now I would like just to to ask to you to look and to think what you see here, what you really see here in this picture, in this proof. This is an easy contact, and as I have told, Jika A. <coughs> understood that the boundary of the adhesive, this boundary, is nothing else than the Griffiths crack. 
it is this process which you see is closing of a crack on one side and opening of the crack on the other side. This, what you see, is a fracture. Adhesive contact is, yeah, it is a fracture problem. You see the fracture and defracture, closing of crack and opening of crack on different sides of the contact. Why do we not call this fracture? Because nothing is destroyed. Uh, it is fracture along the pre-described surface. Why along the pre-described surface? Because we assume that the interaction is weaker than the cohesion. The adhesion is weaker than cohesion. So they, they do not separate inside, they separate on the, on the surface. But uh, if to, according to some processes, the material is weakened, uh, damaged, or something like this, then, of course, it is possible that this process goes not along the pre-described, the initial surface, but it goes along to other surfaces. It's the same, and it is the same process. This is a crack propagation, Griffith's crack propagation. Here is a Griffith's crack propagation, here is a Griffith's crack propagation. This is the same, this is adhesion and fracture. Fracture is the same as adhesion. And it was understood in 1958 by Radinovich, Ernest Radinovich, who also made theory of you know, adhesion, adhesive, known as adhesive, where? Theory, Radinovich. And he also compared the elastic energy, which is just as, as in the theory of Griffiths, crack propagation, the energy, elastic energy stored in this contact, and the work of adhesion needed to separate, and uh, the, the the condition for separating the equation. I do not go in details, of course, here, but uh, I just, just would like uh, to know how adhesion is practically, has all prerequisites for fracture, because it is, it is fracture. And it, it leads then to, uh, we have also this uh, Roman Port published a very comprehensive uh, theory of where it is a fear in 2018 in the same uh, journal of friction published by Frigger and Cinco. So now I come to the end of my today's lecture. You have seen some experiments and some simulations. The experiments have been done all with this uh, setup. Here you see the contact, the, elast the elastomere, which is transparent elastomere, so one could look from, from below with the camera and recording record the video of the contact. And the simulations made by the boundary element method um, extended to a easy contact, which is published in this section. Um, journal, there are examples of how of different shapes it are detaching and for example Mary Poppins if it if it is stamped in form of a Mary Poppins then it will detach first here on this point then <laughs> this and, and and this is the last Stable for this stable situation, then after that it will be touch Thank you for your attention.